All right, so today we're gonna to be talking and teaching aquatics about survival swimming. This is gonna be our last topic for this semester in the teaching aquatics class. And you can see here in a couple of the pictures some of the information that we're gonna be covering when it comes to survival swimming. Up here, different position when you're in a group. We talked a lot about being able to rotate over from front to back for survival swimming during the float to make sure that individuals' heads are up out of the water in order to take a breath. Example below are three different types of survival positions, the help position, the survival position, and then also the huddle position when you're in a group um, and needing to survive within the water. All right, so getting into survival swimming, let's first talk about some safety considerations to hopefully then never ever have to deal with survival swimming would essentially be one, you should never ever swim alone. Um, that can be in an aquatic center, a pool, the hotel pool, a lake, beach, you name it. You should always have a buddy system, always have someone that is there with you. Never ever swim alone. Other thing to be aware of, environmental factors. That can be sun, that can be wind, that can be water temperature, that can be um, factors within yourself as an individual. Uh, be aware of those because that can impact, you know, coming from a swimming position to all of a sudden now it's uh, survival. Make sure you plan your swim and make your plans known. If you're going out boating, let your family know when you are leaving and when you they, sh they should be expecting you back. Um, that can also be if you're going to the beach, uh, if you're going to any pool, any area of water, if you're going out for open water swim, you always should let someone else know about your plans and also know, you know when they should be expecting to hear back from you so that if they're not, and something potentially went wrong, they could then contact um, the police, safety patrol, coast guard, you name it, to kind of really start that search and rescue if something did go wrong. And make sure that you take all appropriate safety equipment with you, uh, especially PDF, personal flotation devices should be within. Um, if you're doing any open water swimming, if you're on a boat, uh, please be sure that you have enough for each individual that's on the capsule, that's on the boat, and also that you know where they are located as well in case there is an emergency that you're then able to obtain them. In addition, some safety considerations, and this kind of has to um, talk more about if someone else is in danger, what are some things that you could do? Um, one of the biggest things, reach or throw, don't go. Don't risk yourself into getting into a survival situation by trying to help someone else. So if you're in a pool facility up to this left, you can use a reach assist, this hook, to be able to reach out for them and have them grab it and bring it in. You can use a lifeguard tube. You can use a piece of clothing, a towel, throw it out to them, have them grab it, and then pull back in. You staying on deck. Um, and then here in the bottom left is a reach assist. As you can see, the individual is laying down on the pool deck. Therefore, he's not standing right on the edge and reaching out to where he could potentially easily fall in. This person in the water would have to pull very hard to get all of his weight off of the pool deck and into the water. Other safety consideration, think twice before going near cold water or ice. Hypothermia could set in way quicker than you would believe in water temps that are just below 60 degrees. And look before you leap, look before you jump, be aware of the surroundings before you jump in to the water, know what the depth is, and just be aware um, before getting into the water as well. So for those of you that may have heard of open water swim or may be thinking about doing a triathlon or may be caught in a situation that you are an active survival swimmer, um, there are some tips for navigation and sighting when you're in open water. One of the biggest things is you want to find a prominent landmark or some sort of stationary object to ensure that you're swimming straight towards it. Um, now, if you're in the middle of an ocean and you can't see land anywhere around, then that would be very difficult in that situation. You probably just want to tread water and try to figure out a way to um, save your body heat 
and also your energy. So we'll be talking about a couple of those different situations later. This is more so that you're able to see land, you're able to see the edge, what's the best way to get there. Um, so find a landmark, find something that's stationary, keep your eyes up on it, glance up at it, and make sure that you are swimming in that straight line. The other thing is that you want to switch from a powerful stroke, meaning freestyle, to a resting stroke, which could be any of the three strokes that we've talked about that have that glide phase, um, or even just swimming on your back to allow yourself to catch your breath and be able to, um, decrease your heart rate and your breathing rate. If exhaustion does occur you always want to go into a float position that can be face down and then you just lift your head up take a breath and then face down again or that can be on your back as well treading water we talked a lot about treading water different ways to move your arms different kicks that are associated with treading water um, for the most part, you're staying nearly vertical in the water. This would be something that if you're in a survival situation, you can't see land at all, that you would then need to tread water until you could find some sort of flotation device um, or go from treading water to floating and then back forth. But uh, we talked about different kicks that you can do. So you can do the egg beater kick. Um, you can do a flutter kick, scissor kick, um, and dolphin kick, you know, really the the egg beater kick, breaststroke kick are kind of your best and will save you some energy when doing those. And you also want to be sculling your arms as well. So making that continuous sweeping movement with your forearms and your forearms and your hands just below the surface of the water, pushing that water downwards, which is going to keep your body up. Um, really trying to keep your shoulders relaxed, keep your breath relaxed. Um, you don't want to start getting into panic at this point. You really just want to be breathing and, you know, taking your breath, figuring out the situation. And you can use one of the kicks. Kick just hard enough to keep your head above water. You don't want to exhaust yourself with the kicking either. So here are the scissor kick that we talked about before and then the breaststroke kick. We also have the egg beater kick. So that scissor kick, you're just moving one foot one leg in front and then the other leg in front really just pushing that water down which is allowing you to have force coming up off the water which is able to keep your head above water the breaststroke kick or the frog kick is um you know flexing your knees and moving your ankles and feet outward and then bringing your feet together down underneath of you and then bringing them back up out and then together to try to keep your body up above water and then the rotary kick or egg beater kick, which I believe is probably the most efficient when it comes to treading water. It allows you to save your energy and really not have to stress so much about that moment where you're not kicking because with the rotary kick, egg beater kick, one leg is moving at a time. And so there's actually no break in your kick, which then allows you to feel very confident in keeping your head above water. So for this one, you're going to be sculling your arms back and forth. You're going to pull up um, your legs and kind of tilt them outwards about 90 degree. You're going to rotate your legs and knees and kick one at a time, making kind of large circular movements. You can think about the old school egg beater whipping up. Um, and so one leg's going out, then the other leg's going out, and you should be able to see you know, your shoulders kind of shift back as that one leg recovers and gets back into the position as the other one kicks. And like I said before, one leg kicks at a time while the other leg recovers. So there really isn't any moment of time where you're not kicking or not having pressure on the water, which is different from the scissor kick and the breaststroke kick because at that point you do have a moment where, you know, you aren't kicking during that recovery and where you could sink a little bit. Now the flutter kick and dolphin kick, it works, but it's very exhausting to use those. So we would prefer the ro rotary kick or the egg beater kick to be able to save energy if you are in a survival situation. But definitely practicing and getting confident in your treading water abilities and skills and being able to maintain um, a very relaxed kind of breath and feeling is very important. So now we're going to get into some survival positions. This one is called help position. Help stands for heat, escape, lessening, posture. So as you can see in this boy to the left, 
he has his knees drawn up to his chest and his arms are kind of crossed in front of his body and he's holding on to any type of flotation that you can find here. He has a volleyball that he's using to be able to keep his body afloat and not have to work towards it. So this is for when you happen to be alone in water. This position really protects um, your body's three major areas of heat loss, which is your groin, your head and neck, and then your rib cage and your armpits, your core of your body that we, you really want to make sure that you try to increase and maintain that body temperature. Um, wearing a life jacket or, or a personal flotation device allows you to draw your knees all the way up to your chest and then use your arms uh, to wrap across your knees and really keep yourself really tight um, in a ball, which will help increase your body heat and decrease the um, heat escaping from your body. So you want to keep those legs bent together or you can cross your feet, cross your arms and cuddle a flotation aid, like anything you can find in a survival situation. It could be a piece of wood. It could be a plastic container. Um, we'll talk a little bit later if you just have your clothing that you're wearing, how to use your clothing to be flotation and um, place your hands up at your shoulder, kind of check. Tuck your chin, squeeze your elbows into your body, really try to keep your head out of the water if possible or turning away from waves. Um, just trying to keep that heat within and just really look for the direction of any rescuers and really just trying to maintain your calm and keep your body heat. The huddle position is used when there is more than one individual that is in survival swimming. So um, for this, you're going to really just huddle together with a whole group of people. This helps lessen the loss of body heat and it is a way to kind of keep everyone's morale up and really their mental health and their ability to stay calm, calm in this situation. Also, rescuers can spot a group a lot easier than they can spot an individual. So if any time, you know, you are in a situation of survival swimming, the best thing to do is just bring people together. Uh, you're going to keep your legs slightly bent together across, kind of keep them up as high as you can to your chest. You're going to hold on to other people's um, float or shoulders and form a circle around you. If you have enough of people in your circle to put people inside, you want to do that and really just press your bodies together in order to keep your head out of the water and keep body heat within, kind of heat up that water that is around you. Um, and the other biggest thing, since you are in a group, it's important to have one person kind of take the lead role and be control and really just try to keep everyone else talking um, and keeping their mental state stable and calm until hopefully help and rescue arrives. So here's a situation where if you are stuck survival, surviving swimming on your own or in a group and you have no flotation devices around you, um, you can inflate your clothing that you are wearing. Uh, pants work best if you have them on, but you could also use shirts, especially if it's long sleeve. It happens to be short sleeve. You can still utilize that. Um, so you would just tie the ends of the legs or the arms um, in a knot. If you have drawstrings or a button and zipper, you're going to close them all out. And then you're going to fill up each leg or arm with air and then really just squeeze the bottom of the pants or the bottom of the shirt together and keep it underwater um, in order to keep that air in there. And as the picture on the lower left, you may have to, you know, every once in a while start reflating um, the clothing just to make sure that it's holding enough air to keep you afloat. So if you are in an... Um, experience where you're in open water and you need some sort of flotation, you would then go ahead and take off your shirt or pants while you're kind of treading water in the deep water, tie knots into the low legs, um, tie the pants legs together, and then two different ways you can kind of blow water in. You can swing it over your head to catch air, um, or you can actually put it underwater and then push water and air from above underneath the water to blow it up. Um, so there's three different ways that you can use to inflate clothing. But like I said before, you know, you will have to reinflate 
as required to make sure that it maintains your floating ability. The other thing is if you have sneakers on or shoes on, if there's some way to get your um, laces out, those are really good to tie clothing shut completely to decrease the escape of air. So in this situation, you see um, pants being used. They're doing the overhead technique. So they have the two legs tied at the ends. They're not tied together. He's going to use this kind of like as a noodle underneath. And then just flipping the pants over his head down into the water. And this area right here, when the pants hit the water, is going to push the, the air up and trap it. And then here you can see he kind of holds the bottom of the pants together and then has the ability to float with the legs. And at this point, too, he could blow bubbles under the water and into the pants to be able to reflate them as needed. And then here's a video, just um, some other options for using clothing for inflation. I'm H1 Richard O'Dell, search and rescue medical technician at Naval Survival Training Institute, Pensacola. And this is Petty Officer Trejo. Trejo is performing drown proof, which he's going to lead into the flotation of his trousers. So before he begins, it's very important that you see on land the knot that must be tied on the pant legs in order for the flotation to work. As you see, I took the pant legs, crossed them over, then bring it through, creating that knot. Now what you do is bring that leftover slack and push it through, pulling that nice and tight. That's going to hold the air in. Now, Petty Officer Trejo, as you see, he took his boots off and he's removing his trousers right now. After tying the ankles together, he will then zip up the zipper and button the button. Once he completes that, the first one he will use is the overhead method. He will try to inflate in one motion both trouser pant legs so that he doesn't have to use as much energy. Placing the pant legs around his neck, he's able to then float without using any energy. The second method is the splash method. He's holding the trouser waist wide open while he splashes air into the trouser pants, filling up both legs. And the final method is the underwater breathing. So he's going to take his breath hold and use that to fill up both trouser pants. By him continuing to blow into both trouser legs, this allows the flotation to hold for extended periods while waiting for a rescue vehicle to arrive. All right, so that was your lecture on survival swimming. Uh, just be aware of the different positions, the help position and the cuddle position that can be utilized if you are ever in a situation of survival. And then also ways to um, allow flotation to occur with the use of clothing.